Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nervisesha Sunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupa oh, no. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Sri Ishopanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri. And today we're studying Mantra 11. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Avidyaya mrityam tirva. Vidyaya mrityam ashnate. Translation. Who would like to read for us Mataji's first? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Uh -huh. Only one who can learn the process of a science and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. All right, so let's look at this first, the translation, in relation to previous verses. The last two verses, both 9 and 10, were dealing with the cultivation of knowledge, right? We heard about cultivating, studying vidya and avidya and knowledge and nations. And we heard we get different results. We heard cultivating nations takes us into the darkest, takes us into ignorance. And cultivating so called knowledge is even worse. So now we're hearing we have to learn to cultivate both, learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge, side by side. A topic which could be easily misunderstood. One may think, well, the, the process of nations is what? Maraji, what is the process of nations? Nation is, uh, I mean, it's not the real knowledge. What is it? It is the knowledge to live in this material world. Like, okay. Like, like uh, the universe, it is and all where it is teaching uh, how to make 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, how to make atom bombs, right? Yeah, good. Okay, anybody else like to tell us more about the process of Nashayans? Yes, Hare Krishna. You didn't help me to understand what is the process of nations. So give me some give me some examples. Tell me what you know. You just speak theoretically. I want to hear what is it in heart, in terms of actual activity. Give some examples. I want to understand what is meant by the process of nations. Maharaji gave nice explanation. She said about universities making atom bombs. Something more. Uh, yes, sir. Like, uh, we, uh, many people do the worship of the demigods and uh, they enter into more and more uh, process of uh, material acquisition and uh, they enjoy the fruits of that and they again enter into this uh, the, the life cycle, limited death and birth life cycle. Well, that will come, that's going to come in the next section of verses where we talk about worship and faith. But here we're talking about knowledge. You're bringing up something about worshipping demigods. That's going to come up in the next three verses. I wanted to know more about the cultivation of knowledge and nations. Yes. Verse 9, Mantra 9 and Mantra 10 talks about Avidyam and Vidya. Vidya means uh, knowledge of soul and his connection with the God. Whereas Nesiyans is connected with the Karmakanda rituals, they will be doing it. Mantra 9 says that when you do only Avidya, only uh, Karmakanda rituals, without the knowledge of soul and his relationship with the Lord, it is useless. You will go to darkness. The, on the other hand, when you do only that, uh, you only you attain the knowledge, but ignoring that uh, karma kata rituals, you will get into more uh, darkness. That was ninth stage. And and the tenth mantra, mantra ten, uh, uh, the, the mantra ten says that uh, when you do uh, when you do the, the uh, avidyam, avidyam in this context it means the karma kata rituals. And our, in the present context, in the modern context, it is about materialistic ideas, which, which leads to, uh, which gives some kind of results. And Vidya, the knowledge, knowledge about the soul gives different type of results. And in the level, and the, and the Mandra 10 suggests that you should do both simultaneously. Sideways. But I, I don't know if I really agree with what you say that. Uh, Vidya, the avidya is karmakanda activities, or nations is karmakanda activities. It may be one, karmakanda activities may be one kind of nations, but there's a lot of other things go on in the name of nations. Uh, in the, in the, modern, modern, uh, the modern world is materialistic, all materialistic activities comes under that. Okay. Knowledge I, about all those materialistic activities and uh, all the profit-oriented or result-oriented actions, so all comes under Aditya. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead. Maharaji, back to Maharaji, you can read for us the purport. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, purport. Since the creation of the world, the material world, 
everyone has been trying to attain a permanent life. But the laws of nature are so cruel that no one has been able to avoid the hand of death. No one wants to die, nor does anyone want to become old or diseased. The law of nature, however, does not allow anyone immunity from old age, disease or death. Nor have the advancement of material knowledge solved these problems. Material science can discover the nuclear bomb to accelerate the process of death, but it cannot discover anything that can protect man from the cruel hands of old age, disease and death. Okay, thank you. So would you like to comment on this? Well, I think you already did, right? You told us about the atom bomb. Yeah, the misdirected society, but they're, they're, they're looking at the, the, the symptoms and they're trying to deal with the symptoms rather than see what is the actual disease. You know, they see the symptoms, oh, old age, oh, death, and they're trying to solve that by material knowledge. They haven't understood what is the real disease. So laws of nature do not allow anyone to escape these things. We see science is advancing, we hear so, ma so, much, so many things about the advancement of science and technology, but has it solved any of the problems? People are more unhappy than ever. Places are certainly different. We know what was Bahrain like 30 years ago and how is it now? Or South India, what was India like 30 years ago, how, 40 years ago, how is it now? Things change. but. The problems of life don't change, the same problems are there. So nobody's actually seeing what is the real problem of life. This is the, the, the problem which the point being made. Recognizing what is the real problem. So advancement, in, so advancement of living hasn't solved any of the problems. We'll go ahead. M another manager can read. So Prabhupada's giving a scriptural example to support his arguments. The famous demon. Yes. So he's a classic example of the materialist. That he doesn't want to die. And he in order to get that, he's willing to go to any extreme the austerities which he underwent. And we see people today also do the same kind of things to get their material desires. They undergo great austerities. Prabhupada describes how uh, to get money people have to work very hard. They have to make great sacrifices and sometimes they take great risks risking their health and their lives 
just for the sake of trying to increase their bank balance. So this is the nature of material life, trying to get a little more enjoyment, but not recognizing the temporary nature of the world. Okay, we'll have somebody else read, another Maharajji. Hare Krishna. Hiranya means gold and Pasipu means soft bread. This cunning gentleman, Hirani Kashipu, was interested in these two things, money and woman, and he wanted to enjoy them by becoming immortal. He asked from Brahma many benedictions in hopes of indirectly fulfilling his desire to become immortal. Since Brahma told him that he could not grant the gift of immortality, Hirani Kashipu requested that he not be killed by any man, animal, god or any other living being within the 84 lakh species. He also asked that he not die on land, in the air or water or by any weapon. In this way, Hirani Kashyapu foolishly thought these guarantees would save him from death. Ultimately, however, although Brahma granted him all these benedictions, he was killed by the personality of Godhead in the form of Narasimha the Lord's half-lion, half-man incarnation, and no weapon was used to kill him, for he was killed by the Lord's name. Nor was he killed on the land, in the air, or in the water, or he was killed on the lap of that wonderful living being, Narasimha, who was beyond his conception. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada is giving us a summary of the pastime, the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, how Lord Nishringadev comes to meet all the benedictions given by Lord Brahma and to defeat the demon. So whatever plan man makes, Maya will destroy it, right? Krishna comes to destroy the plans of the foolish materialists. We're always planning. We have our plans, but Krishna has his plans. Ultimately, his plan is for all of us to come back to him. So he arranges these kind of situations, maybe not quite to the extent of Haranyakashipu, but certainly Krishna arranges for each and every one of us to try to help us to come closer to Him, to understand Him, and to know He's present and He cares about us, and He's waiting for us to come back to Him. So Haranyakashipu, he met his fate, and his fate was that he should go back to Godhead, right? He's a, he's a doorkeeper, he's a gatekeeper from Vaikuntha. So Krishna wants, wants them to go back, so he arranged this whole pastime. But we can see also how the pastime and the appearance of Lord Nishringadev is very instructive to all of us who have materialistic plans and ambitions to show us how temporary it all is. Just like uh, Prahlad Maharaj recognized how his father had become very powerful. He was sitting on Indra's throne in the, as the king of heaven, but next minute he was dead, finished, everything taken from him. So it just takes one moment, the heart attack or the, the sudden blood pressure, rising blood pressure, and you can go, we, we can leave the body very quickly. Uh, we had one devotee, family, the lady, one morning the phone rang and she came rushing downstairs to get the phone because she was worried about her father. And she rushed so much, she got to the phone, picked up the phone and collapsed down, collapsed, dead. Very suddenly. 
Nobody, nobody, we never thought she had any health problem at all. Just very suddenly she left the world. So the material body is like that. It's all so temporary. We have no permanent, we have no guarantee how long we will live here. You can say, oh, I'm still young, I, I'm not old yet, or I'm in good health. We don't know. At any moment it can go. We can go. We just lost one of our very dear devotees, the devotee in charge of Gujarat, Yashomati Nandan. Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj was, call, was telling how he called him up to speak to him while he was in the hospital because he'd been in hospital for a few days with the COVID. So Jai Pataka Swami gave him a courtesy call and he was saying, yeah, I'm okay, I think it's all right, I'm going, going back to temple soon. And he was actually back to the temple, but then suddenly he left, left the body. So the material world is like that. We're all very temporary in this world. We don't know how long we will, any time we may have to go. So, so uh, Prala, uh, Parikshit Maharaj asked, What is the duty of one who is about to die? And what is the duty of all men at all time? And the answer was the same. So we have to understand the nature of this world. We'll go ahead. Next, uh, man, some men can read. Hare Krishna. The whole point here is that even Sri Ranaka Sabhu, the most powerful of materialists, could not become deathless by his various plans. What then can be accomplished by the tiny Hiranaka Sabhu of today, whose plans are parted from moment to moment? Go ahead, read a bit more. So what is meant here when it talks about one-sided attempt? So one side did. Which side? Most people are on which side? Most people on material side. Trying to it improve. Maya, not, not with Krishna. Not Krishna side. On the other side, that is Maya. Uh -huh. so why, why are they struggling hard? But I don't understand why, why they struggle hard. Why is there struggle? Where is the struggle? Seems like you are very nice. You drive the car, go to work, you just drive, 
to, you go here, go there, and you, everything is laid on, you know, you have air conditioners in your home, you have so many facilities, where's the struggle? Hasn't technology taken away the struggle? It appears like technology is uh, trying, helping us in the struggle, but to achieve those two ends, to earn the money, person uh, gets up early morning, and he does not remember uh, uh, God, he does not do any devotional service, but he, he, he tries to prepare himself to go to his office, work there for 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, and they earn the money, and uh, from that he wants to buy the happiness. But uh, happiness does not come by that, and uh, whole life goes into that cycle. Once he gets his family, then he gets into the family's uh, fire. And then he thinks, uh, I am the becoming big man. My, I, I will put my children in a good education, good university. And then they go for marriage of that, they have to show off in the society. So to actually to keep that, to maintain that status, person have to work really very hard. And they get sleepless night and they enter into the uh, high blood pressure and other uh, medical conditions. So that is the struggle. Whereas, whereas the uh, animals, they do not think of the next moment. And still uh, uh, God is feeding them. And so the devotees, like when the, when the person is in devotional service, he is not bothered about his food and uh, other uh, normal things. Because he is sure that uh, ultimately God is going to provide him. If we are in devotional service, that is assured. That is my strong little understanding. Yes, I think it's nice what you said, it's good. And also, I think also lack of security there. Although you have job, there's no real security. How long you can keep the job? Because you don't know. So, a lot of struggle. And what are these laws of nature? The law of material nature. Law of material nature is uh, who is born, he is going to die. And uh, uh, here, 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 the body will, body will grow and uh, Jarabhyati will, uh, will come to him one day. Nobody will uh, escape from the Jarabhyati. No. That is the law of nature. Okay. One who takes birth has to die, eh? Yes. Any other laws of nature? Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is the material world is temporary. Yes. So Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, this is Dukale Mahashashwata. Okay. So that's a law of nature, is it? <laughs> Not everybody will, will agree. Thank you, Shri Maharaj. The law of our nature means uh, that we are bound by the three gunas and on our activities are based on that. Yes, right. Yes, the three gunas. Law of karma also. All right, we'll go ahead. Someone else like to continue reading? Please, another gentleman. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The process by which one goes back to God is a different branch of knowledge. And it has to be learned from revealed Vedic scriptures such as the Upanishads, Vedantra, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. To become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life after leaving this material body, one must study the sacred literature and obtain transcendental knowledge. The conditioned living being has forgotten this eternal relationship with God and has mistakenly accepted the temporary place of his birth as, as all in all. The Lord has kindly delivered the above mentioned scriptures in India and other scriptures in other countries to remind the forgetful human being that his home is not here in this material world. The living being is a spiritual entity and he can be happy only by returning to his spiritual home. Okay, so we hear home. Home is where the heart is, right? 
We have a saying like that. I don't know if you know that one, but we say home is where the heart is. We always yes, like to be at home. So people are naturally attached to their homes. Is there any problem with that? No. Natural, right? Natural. But at the same time, sometimes the scriptures warn us not to be too much attached to the home. We're told, we're told the, fa the home and the family, they're all fallible soldiers. They cannot save us. So sometimes there's, there's scriptural references like that. Why is that? I'm sorry, I could not hear that comment. Was the comment there? Yes, Maharaj. I think it is because our permanent home is our original home. Permanent home is our original home. Our permanent home is with the Lord. Our permanent home is with the Lord, huh? So, Krishna doesn't want us to get too much attached to this home. Of course, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you know, he was, he, if you know the, the Vaishnava songs, uh, there's the one song, Shuddha Bhaktata, and uh, he's describing about all the items which are favorable to devotional service. Do you know that song? Shuddha Bhaktata Charanarenu Bhajanan. So he, you know, he, there are six items about surrender, and one is to accept everything favorable for devotional service. So in, the, in one, in that song, Shuddha Bhakata is describing all things favorable to devotional service, and he mentions, and there's one verse where it says, "Yedina grehe bhajana deke greheti goloka bhaya." He says, when I'm in my home and I worship the deity, then what happens? Grehiti Goloko Bhaya. My home is just like the spiritual world. So that's Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He's telling us, you know, his home is not, well, but in contrast, there's other references like Prahlad Maharaj was speaking to his father and he was telling his father, he said, Greha Anda Kupam. Greha Anda Kupam. He said, the, you're like someone who's fallen in the well. The, 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 the greha, your home, is like an andakupam, it's a blind well. You fall in the well, very hard to get out, you know. Many animals, they fall in the well, they never get out, they just die in the bottom of the well. So, there's two sides to the home. Home can be good, home can be a problem. It depends how we use it. This is what we're learning from the Ishopanishad. Just like knowledge, there is, there is this knowledge, we could say nations, and we could say it's useless, but we can also use it in the service of Krishna. Prabhupada was not against technology. He said, we should use it all in the service of Krishna. You know, nowadays we have to use a lot of technology, just like right now, giving class, we're using technology. We have to use these things in the service of Krishna. But we know also there's a lot of abuse 
there's a lot of ways in which people use technology for very bad ways, very dangerous, very think ways which do a lot of harm to the world, to society. So we have to know how to use everything properly. So the home is also like that. Home life can be blissful and good and happy. But it should, it sh we should be in Krishna consciousness. You go to so sometimes here in the home, it's all arguing and passion. One, one, one of our devotee ladies wrote to me recently, you know, she has, she has four children. Mind you, they're, they're, they're kind of grown up. They're not so young. They're like teenagers anyway. And she said, I can't chant any rounds in the morning because it's so, I'm so hectic every morning. I have to do so many things. I have to cook. I have to, you know, so many things to take care of in the morning. And she also works. But she said, I chant my rounds every evening. Not very good, not very ideal, but, you know, better than not chanting. At least she does chant. She does her spiritual practice. But she said in the morning, the daytime, too busy, so much to be done. So, we have to find the balance between these two things. At least she manages to get some time to do their chanting. So Prabhupada is talking here about the process to go back home, a different branch of knowledge. We have to learn it from the right place. What kind of people do we have to hear this knowledge from? Peter. Dira, meaning? Scripture. Dira means Mariji? Sober? He's, he didn't drink, right? He's not drunk. He's sober. In what way is he sober? He does not get affected by the material. Yes, right. He's, he's equipoised, right? He doesn't rejoice or lament. He's equipoised. He's sober-minded. He's above, the, you could say, above the modes. He's not influenced by the modes of nature. So to become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life, after leaving this body, we must make, we must study that literature and get knowledge important for us. Just like you're all doing Bhakti Shastri, very good. It's a good way to study the literature. As we study it on our own, it's never quite the same. But when we study in a group, then it's, we get more. We learn usually more that way. And as a course, then there's some requirements, right? We have to study. If we do it on our own, we're very slack about it. So it's a good way to get the devotees to read the books, to read Prabhupada's books. Very important. Not every devotee reads. But when we do Bhakti Shastri course, then it gets you reading. You, have to, you should be reading, looking at the book and learning. So very important for us to study the, these books and get the knowledge, learn something. Krishna describes four reasons why people surrender to him, right? Who knows? No. Let Mataji speak. Mataji was there first. Right, so tell me in English. So, uh, artha means desiring some uh, material uh, benefit, some material desire. And uh, artha who is in distress, 
So the artha is a distress and arthati is for some benefit and jnana is in knowledge and jignasu inclusiveness. Okay, so which one is the best? Or they're all bad? Are they all bad or is there any one better than the others? Yeah, uh, jnanis are better. Why? Because uh, they, they uh, try to know about the Lord by learning the scriptures. Yes. Yes, the jnani is the best because he's got some knowledge. He's actually under. If we've got some knowledge, just like people may chant, many people may chant, and some people know why they're chanting, they know all about it, and some people they don't know anything, they just chant. So the one who actually knows what he's doing and the process, understands the process, he'll get more benefit than the one who is just chanting and doesn't know anything. But of course everybody gets some benefit. But the one who actually knows and who understands the process, he will get more benefit. This is the point. We, that's why we want to read the books, we want to learn. Then when we chant, we will get more benefit. We will understand, we will we'll come closer to Krishna. And Krishna is also attracted to those who have knowledge. People who come and worship him for wealth or in distress or just curious, they're not so pleasing to Krishna. But the ones who have some knowledge, they're more dear to Krishna. Krishna appreciates them better. So the conditioned living being has forgotten his relationship with God and the and has mistakenly accepted the temporary place of his birth as all in all. Right? Prabhupada is paraphrasing a, a, a sloka from the scriptures. It says, Yashatma buddhi guna petri dakude swati kala tradishu boma ichati. Right? We're thinking the land in which we took our birth is worshipable. We identify with the body, we identify with the country we're born in, we love our country, okay. But it can be in Krishna consciousness. Right? This life we're born in one country, next life we're born in another country. Previous life we were in other country. You know, we don't know. But we've forgotten our eternal relationship with the Lord. And so the Lord made arrangements for us to try to remind us. He came Himself, He spoke Bhagavad Gita, and in other countries they've also got scriptures. The living being can be happy by going to his spiritual home. And we see this, these scriptures, they all speak about that. And Buddhism, they have a thing called the Western world. You know, they talk about the Omitofu land or the Western world. And uh, in Christianity they talk about going to heaven. And for the Mayavadis they want to go to the Brahman. And so we, are also, we also have our spiritual home, right? We want to go there. But devotees, we, we, we're also dependent on Krishna. Actually what we really want is devotional service. We don't just want to go to home. Sometimes we think, I'll go home, I'll have a good rest. <laughs> right? Just like in material world, you go home, I want to go home and have a rest. And so we, we don't go to the spiritual home just to have a good rest. We go to the spiritual home why? What are you going to do there? Devotional service. Yes, right. Devotional service. We're going to do more. Hearing and chanting. Right? There's a lot of things going on there. <laughs> a lot of activity. 
maybe more sankirtan and so many things. Anyway, we, if, when we go there, they'll give us a spiritual body, so we won't feel tired like we do with this material body. Material body is always tired, but when we get a spiritual body, we won't feel that tiredness anymore. That's a big difference. Okay, we'll go ahead. Another gentleman like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, from his kingdom, the personality of God had sent his bona fide servants to propagate this message by which one can return to God. And sometimes the Lord comes himself to do this work. Since all living beings are his beloved sons, his parts and parcels, God is more sorry that than we ourselves to see the sufferings we are constantly undergoing in this material condition. The miseries of this material world serve to indirectly remind us of our incap incompatibility with dead matter. Intelligent living in entities generally take notes of these reminders and engage our, in themselves in the culture of vidya or transcendental knowledge. Human life is the best opportunity for the culture of spiritual knowledge and a human being who does not take advantage of this opportunity is called a Naradama, the lowest of human beings. So, Prabhu, man, uh, I will ask you, Prabhu, can you tell me uh, the, the, w w the miseries of the human body? Uh, is it really that bad? Do you feel miserable in your body? Uh, yes, Maharaj. What kind of miseries do you feel? Adi Bhautik, Adi Atmik, and uh, all three miseries, and uh, this uh, three modes of material nature binds us. And uh, Janma, Vrityu, Jara, Vyadi, this is a major uh, Well, some sometimes people may say to us, they may say, you know, you know, if there's really this God, why he made the world like this, there's so much suffering? Why didn't he make the world a better place? You know, why make this what we're suffering so much, we're just suffering all the time, miseries and, you know, why make the world like this? You know, what kind of God is this? He makes the world, it's all suffering. He's, he's not a very good creator. This is actually mercy of Lord, uh, Lord Maharaj. Uh, because uh, we, we can remember Lord, if we suffer only we remember Lord and can go back, try to go back again, God. Go back, God. Oh, you're saying we have to suffer? Of course. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I look at the world, it seems like some people are suffering, but not everybody's suffering. Seems like there's people enjoying. I mean, he says he's the father, we're his sons. You know, you think he'd take better care of his sons, right? I'm sure you have a son, you take care of him nicely. So shouldn't God, if he's our father and we're all his sons, he should be taking good care of us? Yes, Maharaj. But we're suffering here. He gave us this COVID virus, we're all suffering. What kind of God is this? If, uh, if we are happy here, uh, we will keep ourselves here only. We will not try to come out of this world. 
kemarin. Well, Lord Chaitanya said he wanted to stay here. He said he didn't want liberation. He said he just wanted devotional service, birth after birth. So, seems like some people want to stay here. Right? What's the difference? Huh? Bhakti. The person who, who is uh, serving uh, the Lord has, can serve anywhere, whether he is in uh, Svargaloka or Narkaloka or Puloka. If he, so if he is into Krishna consciousness life, then he will serve the Lord anywhere. But he doesn't suffer? If he's serving the Lord, he doesn't suffer? But even that suffering is a part of, uh, he takes it as a mercy of the Lord. So it's how he, how he accepts the suffering that makes the difference, you're saying? Yes. That one person becomes very disturbed when they're suffering and the other person accepts it as the grace of the Lord. So if we get the COVID virus, we just take it as Krishna's mercy. We have to. We have to take our precautions, but that we want that if we get, then certainly we have to accept that, you know, probably uh, we were supposed to get this and uh, again the mercy of the Lord. So the material miseries which happen to us it's all the mercy of the Lord. Mm, not, uh, depends on the, no, no, no. When I was linking this, I was purely, but then, you know, all the things, uh, like it can be, uh, from the previous uh, karmas also, we will have to face this. Yes. Also karmas are there, right. A devotee considers, eh? a devotee can, Yes. What yeah, they are, they are uh, purely they are not in bodily conscious. They will be in uh, uh, spiritual conscious. So that's why they don't feel much suffering here. So they, they, they're not in bodily consciousness, but they're still suffering. Is it? They still suffer. But they, they're not bothered about it because they're Krishna conscious. Okay, they accept the miseries as the grace of Krishna and they, they accept it due to their karma, yeah. yeah there's a verse like that in the scriptures, right? In Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about this. One who accepts all reactions, one who accepts all miseries to be reactions due to his past deeds, but goes on engaging in my devotional service, then he's qualified to become my unalloyed devotee. Right? Dayabak. Dayabak is is uh, the, because he's accepting the miseries. He accepts it. He just goes on. He understands miseries are not eternal. For some time there'll be misery. It'll be followed by happiness. Happiness and distress, they come together like two sides of a coin. Happiness comes and then it's followed by distress. The distress comes, it's followed by happiness. No reason to lament. Don't be disturbed. All right, we'll go ahead. Somebody read. Oh, 
Oh, wait, Prabhupada was talking about the Nara Dhamma, the lowest of human beings, right? You know about the Nara Dhammas, four kinds of people who never surrender to Krishna. We heard about the miseducators, remember the two kinds of miseducators? What were they? Yeah, Vedavada Rata, meaning one, one people who just mouth the Vedas, and the Maya Aparita Jnana, meaning? As mental speculators. What? Speculators marriage. One whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, yes. Right. So here we have Naradhamma, lowest of men. So can you tell me what is Naradhamma? Why is he the lowest of men? Uh, because, uh, because he has a human birth which is an opportunity to know about the Lord and his relation but still he is not utilizing the opportunity so he is called the lowest of human being. Right. Naradhamma. Yes. May be born in what kind of family? What kind, what kind of family would he be born in? Uh, in next life marriage? No, in this life, before. As a Naradhamma. Why? You know, because he had a good birth, right? Uh, yes, sir. He has a good birth, but he doesn't take advantage. So what's a good birth? Good birth, uh, taking birth in the devotee family. Yeah, he may even be born in a devotee family and he may give up devotional service. Or may be born in the Brahmana family, like that, devotee. And, but they, they grow up, they don't take advantage of the, what, they, what they learned. Sometimes we see people like that, they're born in as not so much born in a family, but somehow their parents become devotees. And somehow the children, they just don't take an interest, they don't like it very, they don't get into it so much. And they grow up and they, they become, you know, not interested. Although they have the culture, they had the training as children, but when they grow up, they don't want, they don't want to be devotee somehow. Oh no, I just want to work, I just want to make money, I just want to enjoy myself. I don't want to be a devotee. I'm not going to be a devotee. We get sometimes devout people like this. They had a good chance to be devotees. They're born in a nice family, nice education, but they don't take advantage. Very unfortunate. All right, we'll go ahead. Prabhu, please read. The path, the path of avidya or advancement of material knowledge, knowledge for sense gratification is the path of repeated birth and death. As he exists spiritually, the living entity has no birth or death. Birth and death apply to the outward covering of the spirit soul, the body. Death is compared to the taking off and birth to the on of outward garments. Buddhist human beings who are grossly absorbed in the culture of avidya, me science, do not mind this cruel process. Enamored with the beauty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly and do not learn any lesson from the loss of nature. Okay, yeah. So Prabhupada is explaining about changing the body, <laughs> path of avidya, advancement of material knowledge. It's a path of repeated birth and death. If we just cultivate the avidya, if we just cultivate the material knowledge only, 
we don't have any spiritual aspect in our life, then sure, you take another body, birth after birth. So Prabhupada is explaining, foolish human beings, they're absorbed in avidya and they, they don't mind the cruel process. Everybody knows, everybody knows we're going to die. Everybody knows they don't do anything about it. They don't think about it. They just, oh, I'll worry about it when it comes. That's sometimes what they say, eh? When we tell them the story of Ajameel, then they say, oh, okay, when, I, when I'm going to die, I will also chant the holy name of the Lord. Is that possible? Why not? Uh, they have the practice. Uh, practice uh, Krishna doesn't give. So, so if we practice only, uh, Krishna gives the memory. Yes. At the time of death, we'll think about all the things we've done throughout our life. We won't be able to think about chanting. We've not practiced it throughout our life, then it will be impossible for us to chant at the time of death. But some people are so foolish and so stubborn that even though we explain these things to them, they won't do it. Right? Prabhupada tell, tell, told the story how the, 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 the son is saying to the mother, chant, chant. Chan, and what's she saying? What's it? Yeah, mother saying can. Say Hare Krishna, mother, and she says. What does she say? The boy says, "Say Hare Krishna, say Hare Krishna," and the mother looks at him and says, "I cannot say so many things." <laughs> She can say, I cannot say so many things, but she cannot say Hare Krishna. So that's the unfortunate soul. But some souls are fortunate. Some people are fortunate. Not all. Not everybody. So death, Prabhupada is describing death, the change of garments. We have to change the garment, change the body. So that's what death is. The change, just like it changed the body. I remember His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami some years ago. Some years ago he had a heart problem. So his disciples in Ujjain, they were very worried and they were, you know, really upset, worrying about him. And he said to them, he said, why are you crying? He said, if you get a new car, you don't cry. Right? You get a new car, nobody's crying, you're all happy. Want to go and drive in the new car, have a look at the new car. Hmm. So the body is just like a car. Or here the Prabhupada says, the, the clothing, the garments, same thing, the vehicle. The body is the covering of the soul. So you change the covering only, change of covering. That's how death is. So you get a, a new body, a new dress, a new garment. No reason to lament. But people in the bodily consciousness of life, they lament. They want to enjoy the body forever. Okay, the beauty of the illusory energy, enamored by the beauty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly. What is that beauty of the illusory energy? Please tell me someone. Anyone? Yes, Prabhu? Uh, can I put up one example? Yes, please. Uh, in a 
in a Vrindav, in a Vrindavan, when uh, Putana came, they, they came in uh, such a beautiful form, and all the Rajvasis and Gopis, they thought like uh, she is uh, Goddess Lakshmi herself. So that is the illusory energy by which uh, things work, that people, we think like is like a Lakshmi, but uh, she is uh, really a demonic uh, nature person and uh, came to kill the Krishna. But everybody thought like it is uh, the love, love of Lakshmi which is bringing her here and uh, to see the, to the, see the Krishna, she has come. Okay. So Maya is so powerful and it can uh, change our mind with the cosmetic. <laughs> but, uh, so Putana, by her mystic power, she could appear like a gopi. Of course, she was lucky. She did, she wanted to be like a gopi, so she got to be a gopi in the spiritual world. Krishna took her to the spiritual world to be because she he thought, well, she's come here dressed like a devotee. She looks like a devotee. She can come and go with the devotee. When the devotees die, they go back to Godhead. So Putana also went back to Godhead. Okay, good. Any other examples? The beauty of the illusory energy? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. One more. Uh, this uh, uh, Indra, once he cursed by uh, this one, he came to here and he born as a boar, pig. So okay. he, he was enjoying too much here. So that, that is the illusory energy. He doesn't want to come back. Uh, Narada Muni came and told, you are uh, Indra, the uh, king of heaven, you come back. But he didn't uh, accept it. I am here happy and uh, I am uh, too much, my area is very big. Like that he was here. So that is the illusory energy of Maya. Okay. Yeah. Indra cursed by Brihaspati to become a pig. And he's so happy. And the pig body, right? <laughs> and what happened? What did Brihaspati do? Did he leave Indra in the pig body? Uh, yeah? Happy with yeah. What happened? He was happy with this, uh, uh, this Janma, the pig Janma. Yeah, but what did Brihaspati do to save him? He brought the butcher. A, a butcher came with a big knife and he said, where's that big fat pig? And that was Indra. <laughs> so when the butcher came with a big knife, then Indra changed his mind. He said, okay, okay, I'll come with you. Take me with you. So the beauty of the illusory energy, Prabhupada talks just like different cities, they put all these lights up everywhere, the lights, the bright lights and the neon signs and so many things, just to attract everyone, to absorb everyone's mind. Nowadays when you drive everywhere they have so many advertisements and they have these different screens with pictures going on them and everything. You know, just to uh, attract people's minds and absorb their mind in the beauty of the illusory energy. And we're thinking, oh, very nice. And we forget about all the problems of life. So we always we have to be very careful not to be too much attracted by the illusory energy. Always remember how temporary it all is. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone else can read? Thank you so much. Yes, Hare Krishna. The path of Avidya, the path of Avidya or advancement of material knowledge, that is also the also her. Therefore, the culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge essential for the human being. Sense enjoyment in the diseased material condition must be restricted as far as possible. Unrestricted sense enjoyment in this bodily condition is a path of ignorance and death. 
The living entities are not without spiritual soul. Even every living being in his original spiritual form has all the senses which are now materially manifested, empowered by the material body and mind. The activities of the material senses are forgotten and reflections of the activities of the original spiritual self. In his disease condition, which so engages in material activities under the material covering. Real sense enjoyment. Real sense enjoyment is possible only when the disease of materialism is removed. In our pure spiritual form, free from all material contamination. Real enjoyment of the senses is possible. Person must regain its health before he can fully enjoy sense pleasure. Thing. Thus, the aim of human life should not be to should not should not be to enjoy perverted sense enjoyment, but cure the material disease. The aggravation of the material disease is no sign of knowledge, but a sign of vidya, ignorance. For good health, for good health, a person should not increase his fever from 105 degree to 107 degrees, but should reduce its temperature to the normal 98.6. That should be the aim of human life. The modern trend of material civilization is the temperature of average material condition, which has reached point of 107 degree, 107 degrees in the form of atomic atomic energy. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, the foolish politicians are trying that any moment the world may go to hell. That is the result of the unspent of material knowledge, neglect of the most important part of life, the culture of spiritual. The Ishopanishad theory wants that we must not follow this dangerous path leading to death. On the contrary, we must develop the culture of spiritual knowledge so that we may become completely free from cruel and sin. Okay, can you tell me please, what is this aggravation of the material disease? Aggravation of uh, material disease because people here, they try to prolong their existence. If they, they are doing some activity which will make, the, make their life more worse. That means they want to extend their life of uh, miserable condition. How do they do it? How, do, how does it happen? By unrestricted sense enjoyment. I'm sorry? Unrestricted sense enjoyment, Maharaj. Oh, more, more sense, unrestricted sense enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that actually, that is, that is the source of, because of the abhidhya. So, this is no sign of knowledge, but it's a sign of abhidhya, ignorance. Okay, so can you give us a, an example in very basic terms about how people may aggravate the material disease? What would they be doing? Uh, because they try to enjoy their senses in a perverted way. How do they enjoy? Yes, Maharaj. How do they enjoy? Tell me. What do they do to enjoy? How do people enjoy? You know, you tell me, I mean, I, I, I want to understand what is this enjoyment in a perverted way? Give me some example. What do they do? I can't imagine. So, uh, in the example, we can say that people will start from the abhidhya. Actually, abhidhya, when it is in exist, when the material, the, the material condition starts with an abhidhya, and that abhidhya actually makes one's believe that he is uh, whatever he is the body, and he will he is always ignorant of the soul, and he is mind is totally, totally grows with uh, so many sense enjoy. For example, you want to see a movie or you want to see some some kind of music and it try to give pleasure to his senses. 
So that is the way he continued to uh, continue his uh, his existence here by his continuously his giving pleasure to his senses. Okay, but we have Prabhupada gives an example about the the fever, you know, increasing the fever. How how do they go about doing that? Ah, fever. So Prabhupada is giving example here for good health. Uh, one must have a normal ninety eight point six degree centigrade, but we should not increase the fever from one zero five degrees to one zero seven degrees. So tell me. What do they what do they do which increases the fever? Because because of material condition, actually aggravates their fever is not. Because of that uh, propensity to enjoy the material nature, that actually increases their fever is condition. That is what Silla Prabhupada is. But yeah, I would just like you to tell me in clear language, you know just so I can understand very clearly what they're doing to enjoy this material. I mean, you said, go and see a film, listen to music. It sounds very tame to me. You know, if that's all they did, you know, I mean, <laughs> I don't see how that increases the fever. You just go to watch a movie or you see a film or something. Is that really increasing the fever? That is what I believe is that, uh, Maharaj, that whenever we, we try to enjoy more, so because of the loss, that loss is not satisfied. And that loss is just like in Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned that the loss is burning like a fire. And actually, through to quest of uh, the quest of uh, the, this uh, dust of this the lost, so the human body, human human being, they try to they try to enjoy the senses to the fullest, so that they think that the lust will be satisfied. But the lust is never satisfied, and that actually increases his desire to enjoy more and more. That is actually, I was feeling that uh, the feverish mental condition is. Did you ever see? Did you see anybody like that? Did you Did you ever know anybody like that who could never satisfy their lust? Yeah, it's me also. To my example, I can give. So there are so many uh, things. Are there with me? It is not going till I am in the Krishna consciousness. Still, it is not going up. So that is still it is existing with me. There are many. There are some uh, uh, bad habits. Still, it is persisting with me. But it's not going up. So this is one one of the example. For example, there is a propensity to read some uh, material books. So that is actually long before it's gone, but still it is continuing with me sometimes. So this is one of the examples I can give of myself. Okay. Anyway, it seems like your, your bad habits are not very bad if you just read a book sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure that there's a lot more worse things people can do, you know. This is one of the examples, Dr. Maharaj, but... Uh, there are so many others also, it is still existing with me. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay. Still, I pray to Asla Prabhupada, Guru and Goraga to just to help me out of this. Okay, anyway, we're, we're told not to aggrav aggravation of the material disease. Is the, huh? Old more than is required, Mataji. Sorry? To hold more than what is required. Hold more than what is required? Yeah, like uh, probably one comes to middle east to earn money or some X amount of money, but then they continue for their lifetime earning more than for you know, for next two, three uh, generations to come through. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Did they increase the nature? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is do you free? You have uh, whatever the material activity we do, when we do this uh, sub two years free, we will do more and more. When we, when we say that it's the Krishna who is going to be the entire, the thing will be marked. Over the period of time, we will be able to do it. Also. So, in the increase of temperatures, we, are, we have the sense of two years. 
Okay, thank you. Maharaj, you wanted to say something? Yes, Maharaj. Is it uh, mediating intoxication, gambling and illicit sex? Yeah, they very... And, uh, yes, what about them? That will increase the, this material, materialistic affinity. Yes. Increase the fever. Definitely, yes. Very true. So Sri Aisha said we should not follow the dangerous path leading to death. <laughs> Why is it dangerous? What's the danger? It increases the material fever. No, what's the danger? We're talking about the dangerous path leading to death. So Maharaj, we will get more entangled. Yes. It is dangerous because it keeps on, uh, uh, makes us eventate birth and death in the cycle it takes us. Hey, we may lose the valuable human body. We may become an animal or a tree. Uh -huh. Right? So that's the danger. Right? That we have the valuable human life, if we don't use it properly, next life there's no guarantee where we will take our birth. And we saw even some Jagbarat had to become a deer for some time. So dangerous. And many people, they're so attached to their factory, in their office, they come back again, take birth again in the office as a mouse or rat or something. So that's the danger. We lose a valuable human life. We'll go ahead. Prabhu, please. This does not mean that all activities of the maintenance of the body should be stopped. There is no question of stopping activities, such as there is no uh, question of wiping out once a temperature altogether when trying to recover from your disease. To make the best use of bad bargain is appropriate expression. The culture of spiritual knowledge necessitates the help of the body and mind. Therefore, maintenance of the body and mind is required if we are to reach our goal. The normal temperature should be maintained at 98.6 degrees and the great sages and saints of India have attempted to do this by a balanced program of spiritual and material knowledge. They never allow the misuse of human intelligence for the disease sense gratification. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Prabhupada says, no question of wiping out one's temperature altogether. Just like there's a, the past, the story is there. The boy had the fever, so they sent for the doctor. The doctor came gave him an injection and the boy died. So they said, oh, the boy, he's dead. The doctor said, a fever is gone, no more fever. <laughs> right? This is a doctor, foolish doctor. He said, a fever is gone, no more fever anymore. And they said, he's dead. And so some people are like that, and you see that they want to make, wipe out the temperature altogether, <laughs> trying to recover from a disease. They, they, this is a mayavadi, impersonalist. They want to make everything zero, stop everything. Nothing, everything, nothing is real, everything is illusion, all maya. And go away from the world, go and sit in the cave. This, this is wiping out the temperature altogether, 
turning away from the world. So we, we want to know how to recover from the disease. So what is the right way to recover from the disease? Prabhu, can you tell us, the one who read? Right. In this way, we can keep the temperature minimum. Yeah, there has to be a balance between the spiritual and the material. Right? You have to cultivate spiritual knowledge. At the same time, we have to cultivate material knowledge. What does it mean, material knowledge? Does that mean we have to go to college? We have to go and study engineering or computer programming? What kind of material knowledge do we have to cultivate? Which is favorable to the Lord's service. Huh? Anything what, we learn, anything what we learn from the material knowledge has to be utilized in the Lord's service. Okay, what are some what 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 is the sign of an educated person, material knowledge? How will you know this person is educated? How will you know he's got good knowledge? Remember we studied that the 16 or 18 points of knowledge? The previous mantra, there were so many points of knowledge. What was the first one? Humbleness. Humble, Humbleness. yes. Humble, pride, without pride. That's a sign of material knowledge. He thinks, I, I'm nobody, I'm in, insignificant. He offers respects to others. He doesn't expect any respect for himself. That is material knowledge. What else? Material knowledge. Some other things. What was the most important item? Remember, there were 16 or 18 items there. The first one was humble and prideless. And then there was also something... Not for as a religionist, simply for the name and fame. Okay, yeah. But what was more important? There was something else more important. Gentlemen. Yeah, that's the, that's the first one. Humble, pride, without pride. You have, to, you, you have to become a pure devotee, on a light devotee. That's also required. Become a, a pure devotee. And you have to have a spiritual master in order to do that. You need the help of a spiritual master. Take it as shelter of a spiritual teacher to guide us. Spiritual teacher will teach us material knowledge as well as spiritual knowledge. Right? Spiritual teacher doesn't just teach only spiritual knowledge. He will also teach a lot of material knowledge. Prabhupada gave us a lot of material knowledge, taught us a lot about the material world, how to take care of the body, when we should eat, when we should sleep, what time we should get up in the morning, how to keep the body in fit, what to do when we get sick. So many things Prabhupada taught. Not only Bhagavad Gita, not only philosophy, but he taught us also material knowledge. He taught, he taught, taught us how to run the temple, how to keep accounts and everything keep account of all the money, all of these things. So this is all required, material life. We have to have the balance. All right, we'll go. Yes, somebody wants to say something? Is it? No? We'll go ahead. One more man, read please.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा महाराज यस ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज डिजीज्ड बाय ए टेंडेंसी टुवर्ड सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन हैव बीन रेगुलेटेड बाय द वेदास अंडर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सैल्वेशन दिस सिस्टम एम्प्लॉयज रिलीजन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन एंड सैल्वेशन बट एट द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट people have no interest in religion or salvation they have only one aim in life sense gratification and in order to achieve this end by end they make plans for economic development misguided men think that religion should be maintained because it contributes to economic development which is required for sense gratification thus in order to guarantee further sense gratification after death in heaven there is some system of religious observance but this is not the purpose of religion the path of religion is actually meant for self realization and economic development is required just to maintain the body in a sound healthy condition a man should lead a healthy life with a sound mind just to realize vidya true knowledge which is the aim of human life this life is not meant for working like an ass or for culturing avidya for sense gratification hari krishna so we see the problem misguided men people they no interest in religion they never think of liberation they only think of economic development sense gratification so this is not the real path so you have to understand the importance of self realization we'll go ahead someone read hari krishna maharaj Yes, so the, path of, the path of vidya is most perfectly presented in Srimad Bhagavatam, which directs a human being to utilize his life to inquire into the absolute truth. The absolute truth is realized step by step as Brahman, Paramatma, and finally Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. The absolute truth is realized by a broad-minded man who has attained the knowledge and detachment by following the eight. Eighteen principle of the Bhagavad Gita, described in the purport of Ma- Mantra ten. The central purpose of these eighteen principle is the attainment of transcendental devotional service to the personality of God. Therefore, all classes of men are encouraged to learn the art of devotional service to the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So we see. I just spoke about this. no the prop is saying the same thing the important point is become a pure devotee surrender to krishna okay so i don't want to go over time we will stop here we can finish it there's not much left we'll finish it to, uh, on the next class are there any questions hare krishna maharaj dhanda patrana Yes, Hare Krishna. Well, I didn't speak one single word today. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want Do you want to say something now? No, just because last time you said that's why I was I completely quiet. Oh. One and all. Okay. Did you learn anything? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Very good. What's your name again? Uttam Krishna Das. Okay, so I'll rem- try to remember, and I'll call on you next class. I'll ask you a question. Hare Krishna. Okay, Prabhu, thank you very much. We we'll stop here tonight. Shri Lal Prabhupad Ki Jai. Yeah. Go back to Vrindaki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai